The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, there was a king among the people who lived before you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not mention the name of the king. Neither does he mention the specific time in which they lived. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not mention in what year that was. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam simply wants us to learn something from their story. In the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates in the Holy Quran, and Allah in most cases does not mention the times or names or places, because that is not important. The most important thing is the lesson that is contained in the story. Sometimes a story is narrated in the Holy Quran and we busy ourselves with things that may not be necessarily important. For example, in the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and Hawa, they ate of the fruit. That's what Allah said. He forbade them to eat from the tree. They ate, they disobeyed. The lesson is they disobeyed and Allah forgave them. But you find people wasting time discussing what, what tree it was. What tree is it that Allah forbade them to eat? And what was the fruit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade them to eat? Was it an apple? Was it an orange? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had deemed that necessary, Allah was going to mention it in the Holy Quran or the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to shade more light on that. But that is not the lesson. The lesson is in what happened. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this case narrates to us a story and I want us to pay particular attention to this story narrated by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not speak of his own authority. It is only wahi that is given to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَخَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ If the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to create any stories about us or create lies about us, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ We would take him by his right. ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ And would cut his very vein that takes blood to the heart. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a king among the people that lived before you. This king claimed that he was God. He claimed he was Allah. Just like Fir'aun said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la, I'm your Lord, the Most High. This king in a similar manner said, I'm your Lord and there is no creator apart from me. But obviously when you claim to be the Lord, when you claim to be Allah, when you claim to be God, people expect you to do things that Allah does. So this king used to do some miracles, some things to surprise people, in order to affirm to the people that he was God. Sometimes he would call a man and say to him, you fulan, come over here. The person goes to him and he tells him, you, yesterday you were with your friends, you sat in, uh, I mean, you sat in such and such a place, you said this, and then your friend said this. Hey, but how did you know that? You were not there. He says, I'm your Lord, so I know everything that you do. Sometimes the king would command a cup, a cup of water to come to him. He would say, cup of water, come to me. And the cup would fly in the air and into the hands of the king. People would say, but how do you manage to do that? He says, I'm your Lord. I'm God and therefore I'm able to do everything. The truth is that the king had a magician. Sahir, someone who practices black magic or witchcraft if you like. This magician was an expert. In the same way that Fir'aun also had magicians. Fir'aun claimed to be God and he had magicians 
that performed wonders for him so that people would believe in him. When Musa alayhi salatu wasalam came to him, when Musa said to him, Awalaw jiktuka bi shayin mubin, qala fa'ati bihi in kunta bin as-sadiqin, fa'alqa asahu fa'idha hiya thurbanu mubin, wa naza'a yadahu fa'idha hiya bayza'u lil-nazirin, qala lil-mala'i hawlahu inna hadha la sahirun alim. Because he's used to witchcraft, when he saw what Moses, Musa alayhi salatu wa was able to do, he thought this is just witchcraft, the same witchcraft which my people can do. Call my people, do the same witchcraft which Musa is doing, and they threw their rods and they turned into snakes. The truth is that um, a witch or a person who practices black magic cannot turn a rod into a snake. Or they can't do what they claim to do. All they can do is bewitch the eyes of the people. So that the people see what is not there. When these witches threw their rocks, the sticks to the ground, the sticks did not turn into, into snakes. They remained sticks. But, saharu a'yun nas they bewitched the eyes of the people. So that the people saw snakes. They don't have the power to turn this into a snake, but they have the power to bewitch your eyes so that you see what is not there. So this Sahir performed his wonders for him. And there came a time when he said to him, Great king, I am now growing old. And very soon I may die. And once I die, this knowledge, he called it ilm, this ilm will go with me. Therefore, there will be no one to carry on this ilm. I need you to find me someone, a young man, very intelligent, someone who can learn very quickly, someone who can take over this ilm. What ilm? The ilm of witchcraft. Someone who's going to continue to perform these things for you. Because once I die, you won't be king anymore because you won't be able to do the things that I do for you. Find me someone, a young man, I need to teach him to pass over the knowledge. Ashab al Bati, the people who practice rubbish, also believe this knowledge has to be carried over by their progeny. I think you've heard of situations where a grandfather dies and leaves his his guns and his uh, uh, magic and everything with his, with his grandson or with his son to, to continue. They believe in the continuity of Bati, something which is not true. They want someone else to inherit it so it can continue. So this magician wanted the same for the king. So they went and found a young man who was ready to, to learn. Actually, lots of young men were willing to learn. Who does not want to, to sit next to the king to become more like a minister? You do things for the king and you become very important. There were lots of people willing to do that. A lot of people sent their children, go and learn from, from, from the witch. Go and learn black magic so you can sit next to the king. So this young man was chosen to learn the, the dark arts, the black magic. So that when this man dies, there is someone to, to succeed him. So he started giving him instructions. When you want to do this, this is what you do. If you want this to turn into milk, this is what you do. He taught him everything. And you must know that magic is divided into two groups. There is the kind of magic in which someone uses the jinn to perform their magic. And there is another type of magic which is simply trickery. My hands are just quicker than your eyes. I trick you with my hands and you can't see. This is one type of magic. And another type of magic. When a person says he can turn a handkerchief into a dove, can he really do that? He really can't do that. It's the jinn that transform themselves into a dove. If a person says he can turn a goat into, into a cow or a snake, can he really do that? He can't do that. It's the jinn that changed their shape 
and look like snakes or look like cows. If you give him the challenge, like Abu Dhar did, cut off his head and say, join it, he can't do that because this is reality. This is not a show. So this young man was learning, who was becoming an expert. So one day, while going for classes to go and learn witchcraft, he passed by a man, and this man was a monk. He used to hide in the bush. This man was a man of Tawheed. He knew Allah, but he could not expose himself to the king because the king killed anyone who believed in Allah. He had announced that he was Rabbukumul A'la, the Lord, the Most High. If anyone believes in any other God apart from him, the person had to die. So the boy saw the monk somewhere in the caves bowing and prostrating. The boy was amazed. This is something he had never seen before. He came to him and said, what, 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 what are you doing? He said, what I'm doing, I'm worshipping my Lord. He said, ah, you're worshipping your Lord, the, the king? He said, no, not the king. My Lord and the Lord of the king and your Lord and the Lord of all the people. He's the one I'm worshipping. He said, but how's that? We all brought up believing that the king is God. He taught him Tawheed. He said, this king will die because he is not God. Allah does not die. Anything that dies cannot be Allah. It can't be God. So don't worship the king. You must worship only Allah. So can I, can I come here sometimes to learn about, about Allah? He said, anytime, come, I'll teach you about Tawheed, I'll teach you about Allah. He says, but I, I also have classes in, in black magic. He says, well, when you finish your classes in black magic, you, you come over, I teach you about Tawheed. He said, no problem, I'll do that. So every day, when he finishes learning witchcraft, he goes over to the Rahib to go and learn about Allah. Then one day he comes to the Rahib, he says, Hi, I have a problem. He says, What is the problem? He says, You see, if I, when I finish learning witchcraft and come to you to learn, I arrive home late. So my parents beat me because I'm, I'm arriving late at home. And sometimes I decide maybe I should start by coming here before going to learn the witchcraft. When I go to the witch, he beats me also. He says I'm late. So what am I supposed to do? Which means I have to skip this class of Tawheed. Because once I come here, either my parents will punish me or the witch is going to punish me. He says, don't worry. What you have to do when you are late and you're going to the witch, when you arrive there and he asks you where you were, say, my parents detained me. I was delayed at home because we had some things to do at home. When you're late going back home, tell them it's the witch who detained me because we had, we had so much to learn today. That's how, how come I'm, I'm late. But my question is, is this not lies? It's lies, isn't it? Is it the truth? It's not the truth, it's lies. But this Rahib is teaching the boy Tawheed. And also at the same time teaching him how to lie. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like we said before, has talked about certain situations in which a person is allowed not to say the truth because the person is under pressure. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, at one time there is what we call tawriya. Tawriya means to say something and allow other people to, to think something else. Instead of lying, instead of telling a lie, you say something and let them think something else. In the battle of Badr, he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came across a man. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with Abu Bakr and Umar and the companions and they wanted to find out 
to gather information about the Quraysh. Where were the Quraysh? What time did they leave Mecca? Where would they be at this time? So they met this man who was a shepherd. They asked him, uh, can you tell us where Muhammad and his people are? They started with themselves. They wanted to know whether he knew where the Prophet ﷺ would be and his companions. Can you tell us where Muhammad is, uh, I mean, is with his companions and where the Quraysh are? Where are they? He said, I'm not going to tell you until you tell me where you are from. Rasulullah said, Wallahi, by Allah, we will tell you after you have told us. He said, as for Muhammad and his companions, they left such and uh, such a place at such and such a time. And I think this time, if the one who informed me, informed me correctly, they should be within this area where we are right now. That's where they should be right now. And for sure, the Prophet Muhammad and the companions are there. They're the ones talking to him. As for the Quraysh, they left Mecca at such and such a time. If the person who informed me, informed me correctly, they should be at such and such a place. The Messenger وسلم, has gathered the intelligence, he's got the information. Now it's his turn. He said, we will tell you where we are from or who we are after you've told us. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to him, rather the man said, but you fulfill your part of the obligation. Who are you and where are you from? Should they say, we are Muhammad and this is Abu Bakr and we are the ones fighting the Quraysh? Is that what they're supposed to say? That's dangerous. That's giving themselves away. So they said, the Messenger وسلم, said, Nahnu min ma. There was a tribe, a kabila called Ma, Banu Ma. When the Messenger وسلم, said, Nahnu min ma, we are from Ma, the man automatically thought, oh, these people are from the tribe of Ma. ma. The Messenger وسلم, didn't mean that. He meant, Nahnu min ma, we are created from water. فَلِيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّ خُلِقْ خُلِقَ مِنْ مَاءٍ دافق. And for sure, he's min ma, he's from water. We are from water. The Messenger وسلم, is from water. And Abu Bakr is from water, I'm from water, you're from water. That's what the Messenger وسلم, wanted to say. But he knew the man would understand something else, the tribe of water. This is called Tawriya. You can't give yourself away. You say something and let the enemy understand something else, if they want. <coughs> Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, one time, he's in the majlis teaching, and people walk into the masjid. They're looking for Muhammad bin Nasr. Muhammad bin Nasr is a good man. They're looking for him, Zulman is just Zulm. The Amir wants him. Maybe they want to punish him, they want to kill him. And they come in and say, is Muhammad ibn Nasr here? Asking Imam Shafi'i, we want him, is he here? Should Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah say, yes, there he is uh, seated over there because me, I'm Imam Shafi'i, I don't lie. You should give him away. Here is Imam uh, Muhammad bin Nasr, take him, go and punish him. Imam Shafi'i instead did this. He extended his hand to the congregation like this. And then he gets his right hand and points it here. He says, Muhammad bin Nasr is not here. Why, what would he be doing here? He's pointing at the congregation and then with the hand in his palm, what would he be doing here? He's not here. What he means is he's, he's not in my hand. He's, he's not sitting here. And that's the truth. Muhammad bin Nasr is not sitting in his hand. But the people looking would think he's saying he's not in the masjid. This is called Tawriya. But this is used only in Maslaha where you fear for your life. I didn't say people must behave like that. Understand me. Where you fear for your life. You think the enemy is going to kill you. Instead of telling lies, you use Tawriya. Only when you are in danger and you fear for your life. I didn't say we should live a life like that. It's not an excuse for people to start lying. So this Tawriya 
is what the sahir is teaching the young man. When you go there, you tell them, Habasani sahir, Habasani ahli. And the young man continued like that. He was learning two different things, two opposing things, witchcraft and tawheed. Then, you know, the fitrah of a person, the natural inclination that Allah has created in us, is the inclination to Tawheed, to the oneness of Allah. So one time this young man was walking to the city and he found that there was a lion at the gate and people would not come out. Everyone was afraid. What are we going to do? The tariq, the way has been blocked. The young man said, Ya Allah, if the teaching of the Rahib is true that there is only one God worthy of worship who is you then I will know it today allow me to defeat this lion people were there no one dared to come out so the boy picks up a small stone he said Ya Allah if Tawheed is true then kill the lion slay the lion so he throws the small stone at the lion, a very small pebble, small stone, and the lion falls dead. Ah, everyone comes out and says, this boy has really learned witchcraft nicely from that, that magician. How did you manage? Is this what he's been teaching you? He said, ah, no, not exactly. No, this, this boy is great. He's the next Sahir after that man. The one who sits beside the king, this is the boy. This boy will be doing it for the king. So the boy is apprehensive, he's afraid. He goes back to the Rahib. He says, my sheikh, I killed a lion with a small stone. And now people are almost worshipping me. He said, from now on, you have become greater than me. And you will be tried. And when you are tried, don't come to me. In other words, you're going to face trouble. When you have trouble, don't bring them to me. Don't say he's the one who taught me Tawheed. For me, I've been hiding here for years. Hiding my Tawheed. If you have trouble with them, deal with them. But don't, don't bring them here. Are we together? I said, I'll try. So the boy goes and everyone, the whole city is waiting for him. What they say, he knows. He knows everything. Someone comes with uh, uh, maybe a disease, says, ah, I would like you to heal me. He says, SubhanAllah, I, I don't heal people. But I can pray to Allah that Allah should heal you. So he prays to Allah and the person is okay. Someone else comes and now he became very popular in the city. He's healing, even the blind, everyone. One of the ministers of the king who was born blind, decided he would go to the boy in order to regain his eyesight. So he comes with lots of gifts being carried in caravans. They brought them to the boy. He said to the boy, everything you see here is yours if you give me back my eyesight. He said, I don't heal people. Allah heals people. I'll pray to Allah that Allah should restore your eyesight. The boy prayed and this man recovered his eyesight. He said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I believe in Allah. I've converted. Your Allah is powerful. More powerful than even the witch and more powerful than the king. So he goes back to the king and he's able to see. The king says, Fulan, you can see. He says, Yes, I can see. Who, who did that? He said, my Lord, my God. He said, me? He said, no, 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 not you. He said, but, but I'm your God. He said, no, not anymore. For me, I changed. I discovered Allah. Allah did this for me. He said, look here. We're not going to discuss this topic. You immediately say, I don't believe in Allah anymore. And I believe in you, king. Or I'm going to kill you right now. He said, whatever you do. I believe in Allah. Said, guards, take him, beat him up. 
So they started beating him and beating him. Who did this for you? He said, the boy prayed for me. He said, the boy, the one being taught by, by our witch. He said, yes, go and bring the boy. So they brought the boy. Your witchcraft has become very advanced now. I can see you can even heal people. He said, it's not witchcraft. It's my Lord. Your Lord, you mean me? He said, no, not you. Allah. He said, ah, you too. Allah. Who taught you that? He said, I won't say. Guards beat him up. And they started beating the boy. You know, he's a young man. Ghulam is someone less than 15 years. So he could not be patient. He said, there's a monk in the, in the mountains. He's the one who taught me. He showed me Tawheed. He said, La ilaha illallah. Let's go to the monk. He went to him. Monk is seated. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He says, I'm coming in. You're the one teaching people that there is no God except another God. They won't worship me anymore. He said, but that is the truth. He said, I'm giving you an opportunity. You, meaning the minister, and you young man, and you the Rahib, I'm giving you only a few minutes. You convert, change your religion, start worshipping me, or I'm going to kill all of you. He said, we, we can't change. He said, okay, I'll start with you, the monk. Bring him over. Bring a soul, a heart soul. They brought a heart soul and they cut him into two. Then they turned to the minister, you see what we did to him? It's now your turn. Come on, quickly say, the king is my lord, or we do the same to you. He said, I'm not, not going to say. Okay, very good. Bring him over, bring the heart soul, and they cut him also into two. These are new converts, they just converted a day or two before. But for their faith, they are ready to die. And now, young man, you've seen your teacher, you've seen your convert, we're giving you a chance as well. Who's your Lord? Say it Allah. Very good. Someone comes to the king and says, You see, this boy has become very popular. If you kill him in a similar manner, there's going to be commotion in the city because people love him, people support him. So what you must do, maybe send an army. Let them take the boy to the mountain and throw him over the highest mountain. Then we can give an excuse. We simply say maybe he slipped or something happened to him. That's the best way to kill him. Don't kill him here. He said, yeah, you're right. Take him to the mountain. Soldiers, go and throw him over. When they went to the mountain, the boy said, Allah, you are enough to take care of him. The mountain shook and everyone fell off the mountain and died. The boy came back to the king. He said, what about the soldiers? said, they, they died at the mountain. You killed them? He said, no, my Lord, Allah killed them. He said, what do I do with this boy? He said, take him to the sea. Put him in a boat. Let them sail far from the land, then throw him into the water. So they did. When they went there, he said, Allah, you are enough to take care of her. The boat shook. It turned over. Everyone drowned. The boy walked on water and came back to the king. Said, the soldiers, said, they died. Who killed them? He said, Allah killed them. What about you? Don't you die? He said, I, I can die, but you can't kill me. Allah can kill me. If you want to kill me, I'll show you how to kill me. By your power, you will not kill me. Only by Allah's power. I give you a condition. Before I die, I want you to assemble all the people of the city. I want them here. I want them to witness my death. So all the people came. And then he said, get a bow and get a spear from my kinana, my own spear. Put it in the bow, pull it, and then you say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, Rabbu hadha al the Lord of this boy. That's what you should say. Say, in the name of Allah, the Lord of the boy. Then you'll be able to kill him. So the king followed the instruction and he pulled it. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Rabbu hadha al-gulam, the lord of this boy. He lets go. The spear does not go through the heart of the boy. It just grazes him on the temple. But because he said, in the name of Allah, the boy died. When the people saw this, they said, therefore, this Allah must be very powerful. The king could not kill him. 
until he said, in the name of Allah, we believe in Allah, we believe in Allah, the Lord of the boy, the whole city. Some of his ministers went to him and said, is this what you wanted? See, everyone now has believed in Allah, the whole city. We believe in Allah, we believe in Allah, the Lord of the boy. He said, don't worry, I'll take care of them. What you do, dig pits everywhere, put fire in them. Start grabbing them one by one. Anyone who says, I believe in Allah, you ask him, do you believe in Allah or do you believe in the king? If he says, I believe in Allah, throw him in the fire. So they dug pits. And they started dragging people to them. You believe in Allah? Yes. Throw him in the fire. You believe in Allah? Yes. Throw him in the fire. Until they came to a woman. This woman was breastfeeding her child. When she came to the fire, she hesitated. The child who was suckling said, Mother, you are following the truth. So do not be afraid. Because of this, the Messenger says there are only three people who spoke in the cradle when they were babies. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and the boy of the Uhdud and Ibn Juraj. His story is very well known. Allah has said about this incident, the king and his people. They are looking at what they're doing to the believers. They're not punishing them like this. The only sin they committed, that they believed in Allah. They didn't do anything wrong. Their only mistake was to believe in Allah. I'm not telling this story for nothing. I want you to understand. Muslims today are in trouble in the world, not because of something wrong they did. Our only sin as Muslims, why we are suffering, why we are killed everywhere, why we are hated, is that we believed in Allah. That's our only sin. Nothing else. We didn't do anything. Our only sin is that we believed in Allah. There is a country in this world that behaves like that king. It wants you and me to worship it. Everyone else in the world is worshipping them. The Muslims say, no, I will not worship you. And that country said, because you will not worship me, I will kill you. I will start with your leaders. And our leaders have been murdered while we are seated and watching. In the same way that those believers were cut into two. How many of our presidents have been murdered by the enemy? Many of them. We've sat and watched. How many of our brothers have been killed? Millions of them. Our blood is the cheapest blood. We didn't do anything. The only thing we did is that we believed in Allah and we refused to worship them. They taught homosexuality. We said no to homosexuality and for that we are going to die. They taught nakedness. We said no to nakedness and for that we must die. They taught Beer drinking, we said no to beer drinking, and for that we are going to die. The Messenger وسلم, did not tell stories for nothing. This story affects you, it affects me. In the time of the Messenger, وسلم, it affected the Sahaba. They were tortured, they went through trouble. The Messenger وسلم, told them this story in order to strengthen their spirit. Do not blame yourselves. The enemy does not like you. The enemy hates you for one reason, that you believed in Allah, no other reason. For the reason that you refused to bow down to their evil plan, you said no. Any country that worships them is okay, but any country that says no to their tyranny must be punished. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ 
والله على كل شيء شهيد إن الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق I want you to take courage from this storm I want you to know Allah is with you it's not happening to you alone it's not the first time it's happening it's happened in the world <coughs> before us to prophets to people who came before us but this is the ibrah from the story i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the muslim ummah will open its eyes and see where the enemy is and know why we are suffering and not lose courage aqulu ma tasma'un واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه فهو اهل التقوى واهل المغفره